Hey guys, we're going to be covering properties of curves in this session. Let's get started. Alright, first up we're going to be looking at turning points, uh, maximum point and minimum point. I'll talk about maximum point first, and then we'll go into minimum points. So, uh, a maximum point is when your graph looks like this, and it's the highest point at which um, you can have a y value. So right there, that's where the maximum point is. The other way of looking at it is when the gradient goes from positive to negative, it's also considered a maximum point. So when m, the gradient, changes from positive to negative, it'll definitely be a maximum point. All right, so for minimum point, it's going to be the opposite, where you have the minimum point right at the bottom there. So that's the lowest y value that you could have or the smallest, you could say. All right, and for this, your gradient actually changes from negative to positive. So when your gradient changes from negative to positive, it will be a minimum point. One other thing you have to remember is that the gradient is equal to zero at the turning points. All right, that's why, you know, when it goes from positive to negative, it has to go through zero. And when it goes through zero, it's going to be a turning point. All right, we'll have a quick example of turning points. So here's an example. What are the coordinates of the turning point on the graph of y equals x squared minus 6x plus 1? And I also want to know what kind of turning point is it. All right, let's just have a look at the graph of x squared minus 6x plus 1. So this is what the graph would look like. Now... We know the function is x squared minus 6x plus 1, which means we've got to differentiate this function to get the gradient function. So f dash of x would equal 2x minus 6. And we also know that at turning points, the gradient is equal to 0. So f dash of x is equal to 0. So it's a simple matter of substituting 0 and finding out what the x value is. This is stuff that you would have done um, last year. But we'll just get through it quickly. And as you can see, x is equal to positive 3. Now we need the coordinates of the turning point. So we need to actually figure out when x equals 3, what's the value of y. So we've got f of x, as usual. It's x squared minus 6x plus 1. And we're going to work out f of 3. So f of 3 is 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 1 which simplifies to minus 8. Sorry. So we have the coordinate, which is 3, negative 8, is where the turning point is. So the turning point is 3, negative 8. And from the graph, we can say that it is a minimum point because the gradient is changing from negative to a positive gradient. Okay, looking at uh, different features, uh, different properties of the curve. The next property that we're going to be looking at is increasing functions and decreasing functions. Now, the easiest way to remember increasing functions is, for example, uh, f of x, or a function, is said to be increasing when f dash of x is greater than 0. All right, so when the gradient is positive, we say the function is actually increasing. For decreasing functions, we say f of x is, oops, hold on. So for decreasing function, we actually say the function is decreasing when the gradient is negative. Now I'm just going to show you guys a couple of pictures just to elaborate this a little bit more. So in this case, the gradient is positive, therefore the function is increasing. Well, in this case, the gradient is negative, therefore the function is decreasing. Okay. Now sometimes you can have functions that are increasing for a certain interval and then decreasing and then increasing or a mixture of them. Now in this case, both of these functions are purely increasing and the one on the right hand side is purely decreasing. Alright, having a look at um, another function. Now take a look at this, this function here. Now, I've actually put down two orange lines because the, at those points are where uh, the turning points are happening. 
which means this part here, I'm just going to write it up first. So for this part of the graph, the function is actually increasing. And for this part of the graph, between the two orange lines, the function is decreasing. And finally, this one here, the function is increasing again. So as you can see, the function is doing three different things here. It's increasing, it's decreasing, and then it's increasing again. Okay, now looking at this um, increasing and decreasing functions in an example. So here's an example. For what values of x is the function y equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared decreasing? Now, we know that if a function is decreasing, the gradient has to be negative or less than 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out what um, the gradient function is. So f of x is 2x cubed minus 3x squared, which means f dash of x is 6x squared minus 6x. All right, so we can write, rewrite this as 6x squared minus 6x, and it has to be less than 0, because for the function to be decreasing, the gradient has to be less than 0. Simplifying this, we're going to get x squared minus x has to be less than 0. Now, from this point onwards, it's a lot easier to see this as a graph. I'm just going to simplify it a bit more. x times x minus 1, less than 0. Where's my graph? There we go. That's where my graph is. And I'm looking for the values where it's negative or less than 0. And I can see it's between positive 1 and 0. So that means I can actually say the function is actually decreasing between 0 and 1. So, guys, that's pretty much it for this session here. Um, and this is some of the properties of the curve. So you've got turning points, you've got increasing functions, and you've got decreasing functions. All right, that's it for this session, guys. Thank you for watching.